Archana, you ready? Hare Krishna, Gurudev. Yes, Gurudev, ready. Okay. Om Jnana Tamarandasya Jnana Jnana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tesmai Shri Gurave Namaha Oh, let me see. Hare Krishna, we welcome everyone to our fourth day on the study of Bhagavad Gita. Today we're beginning chapter four, Transcendental Knowledge. Okay, I'm going to share the screen with everyone. Is it clear? Everyone can see? Yeah? Hare Krishna? Hare Krishna? Yes. Is yes, Gurudev, it... can see. Okay. Sarva Panishado Gavo Dokta Gopala Nandana Parto Vatsa Sudir Bhokta Dugdam Gitam Ritam Mahat. Okay, okay. I'm giving class. This Gita Upanishad, Bhagavad Gita, the essence of all the Upanishads, is just like a cow. Lord Krishna, who is famous as a cowherd boy, is milking this cow. Arjuna is just like a calf, and learned scholars and pure devotees are to drink the nectarian milk of Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> เอ่อกิโตปานิชัตต์กล่าวว่าพระวจิตาเป็นหัวใจเอ่อสําคัญของปานิชัตต์ทั้งหลายเหมือนกับวัวและคริชนาผู้เป็นที่รู้จักในน
พราะว่าพระครคีตาเป็นหนังสือที่ตรัสโดยบุคลิกภาพสูงสุดแห่งพระเจ้าเองนะคะเลยเป็นถือว่าเป็นพระเวทที่มีความสําคัญมากนะักสําหรับบุคคลในโลกปัจจุบันเนี่ยซึ่งเขาเนี่ยจะไม่ค่อยมีเวลาในการศึกษาคำพิพระเวททั้งหมดเพราะฉะนั้นหนังสือพระครคีตาจึงเป็นหนังสือพระเวทที่เหมาะมากสําหรับผู้คนในกาลยุคนี้ให้เขาศึกษาเพราะว่าเป็นพระเวทที่ตรัสโดยบุคลิกภาพสูงสุดแห่งพระเจ้าเองโอเค So we're going on to chapter 4 today transcendental knowledge yesterday chapter 3 we heard about karma yoga and chapter 4 is adding something new to the what has been taught. Chapter 3, you heard about karma yoga, karma yoga and yagna, yagna or sacrifice, right? So today we're hearing, we're going to hear about transcendental knowledge. <laughs> Yoga. Knowledge. There is mundane material knowledge and transcendental knowledge. Understand there's a big difference. Mundane material knowledge is concerned with material energy, with matter, with the body. Transcendental knowledge is concerned with the spiritual existence and the soul. Oh, of course, the first verse. The first verse, Sri Bhagavan Vajja imam vivishwate yogam proktavam maham avyayam vivishwan manave prahur manu rikshvakave pravit. Now, please look at the illustration on the right. You can see what's happening. Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna said, I instructed this imperishable science of yoga to the sun god, Vivishwan. So that's what's happening. The sun god is getting the knowledge. Then Vivishwan instructed it to Manu, the father of mankind. And Manu in turn instructed it to Exvaku. So at the end of the third chapter we were hearing how because of ignorance and because of attachment to the material body, there's a lot of lust. So Lord Krishna gave the cure how to get rid of that lust, how to purify that lust, and he explained about the importance of transcendental knowledge. So, in this first verse, Krishna is explaining where this knowledge comes from and how it's passed down through the line of different kings. So Krishna first gives it to Vivishwan who is the sun god. The sun is the king of all planets because the sun gives light to the whole universe. So, 
So the sun, the sun planet is like the eye of the universal body because it provides light that we can see everything in this world. So Krishna gives the knowledge first to the sun god, then the sun god gives the knowledge to Manu, who is the father of all mankind. And then he passed that knowledge to his son, Iksvaku. Then text number two goes on to explain how this supreme science was thus received through the chain of disciplic succession. And the saintly kings understood it in that way. But in course of time, the succession was broken, and therefore the science as it is appears to be lost. <laughs> And so Lord Krishna himself introduced this system of passing the knowledge from the teacher to the student. And then the student goes on to become a teacher and then he passes the knowledge on to his students. So you can see in the illustration, the knowledge comes initially from Krishna and Krishna instructs the knowledge to Brahma, the first living entity in the universe. And then Brahma gives the knowledge to his son Narad. And Narad is the guru, has many disciples, and prominent among his disciples is Vyasadev, who wrote the, all the Vedas and who wrote this Mahabharat, which has the Mahabharat, which has the Bhagavad Gita. So our teacher, Bhaktivedanta Swami, comes in this line from Lord Brahma and he passes on this knowledge as it's coming through the line of teachers. But in course of time, the knowledge was lost because people began to change. They began to make changes in the knowledge. They didn't keep the knowledge intact. And the, the, therefore, when, when they change something, then there's no potency anymore. So in this way the succession was broken and therefore Krishna comes again to re-establish, to teach the knowledge again. And this he did 5,000 years ago on the battlefield at Kurukshetra by speaking Bhagavad Gita. We'll just jump one verse up to verse number four. Arjuna has a question to ask to Krishna. 
because he had, he had heard how Krishna said he gave the knowledge to the sun god. So Arjuna asked Krishna, the sun god Vivishwan is senior by birth to you. How can I understand, how am I to understand that in the beginning you instructed this science to him? So Arjuna has, has asked this question not really for his benefit, but for the benefit of people who do not understand Krishna's transcendental position. Krishna, Arjuna knows very well how, that Krishna could speak this knowledge to the sun god. He understands Krishna's divine nature, how he is transcendental. But Arjuna is asking this question because there's many people who do not understand Krishna and who think Krishna is an ordinary person who takes birth and who dies like us. So remember in the second chapter we Arjuna surrendered to Krishna and said I am your disciple and the soul surrendered unto you please instruct me and then in the third chapter, the beginning of the third chapter, Arjuna asked Krishna that I'm confused that you're talking about knowledge, but at the same time you want me to fight. Which one do you want me to do? So here again, Hari, Hari Krishna, can you hear me? Yes, good. So here again, Arjuna is showing himself to be the very good student. He's putting a very important question to Krishna, not for his benefit, but for the benefit of all the foolish people who cannot understand Krishna's nature. <laughs> So, uh, let's see uh, the next text. Krishna replies, right? He explains to, in response to Arjuna's question, Many, many births, both you and I have passed. I can remember all of them. But you cannot, O subduer of the enemy. Arjuna, by asking this question to Lord Krishna, he allows all of us to understand the difference between God and the living entities. 
ทานให้พวกเราทุกคนเนี่ยสามารถเข้าใจความแตกต่างระหว่างพระผู้เป็นเจ้ากับสิ่งมีชีวิต Lord Krishna can remember all of his previous births Arjuna because he's a ordinary living entity he cannot Arjuna is like us he forgets but Krishna doesn't forget Krishna นะคะสามารถระลึกได้นะคะเกี่ยวกับทุกๆชาติของเราว่าเราทำอะไรเป็นอะไรมาทั้งหมดนะคะแต่ว่าอรจุนะเนี่ยไม่สามารถจำอะไรได้เลยเหมือนกับพวกเรานะคะ And you can see in the two illustrations in the lower picture you have Lord Krishna instructing Arjuna so previously Lord Krishna one of Lord Krishna's incarnations he came as Nara, Nara, Narayan and he came with Arjuna Arjuna came as Nara and Krishna came as Narayan so you see the two great sages the upper picture there the two sages Nara Narayan รูปเราจะเห็นได้นะคะสองรูปนี้รูปข้างล่างเนี่ยก็คือเป็นรูปที่ตอนนี้คริสตันเนี่ยกำลังสั่งสอนออร์จูนะนะคะแต่รูปข้างบนเนี่ยก็เป็นสองคนใช่ไหมคะหนึ่งสองคนนี้เนี่ยก็เป็นคริสตันกับออร์จูนเหมือนกันนะคะแต่ว่าในสมัยก่อนสองคนนี้ชื่อว่านาระนารา So Krishna spoke in the Bhagavad Gita many times before and as we heard in the first verse he spoke it to the sun god and that was millions of years ago And at that time, Arjuna was also present in some other form, but Arjuna doesn't remember. We'll go ahead to text number seven, which is one of the well-known verses from the Bhagavad Gita, and it describes when or why why Krishna comes or when he comes. Whenever and wherever there is a decline in religious practice or descendant of Bharat and a predominant rise of irreligion, at that time I descend myself. เมื่อใดและที่ไหนที่การปฏิบัติตามหลักศาสนาธรรมะเสื่อมลงโอ้ผู้สืบราชวงศ์บรรทัดและการปฏิบัติที่ผิดต่อหลักศาสนาอาธรรมมีอำนาจเหนือในขณะนั้นตัวข้าจะเสด็จลงมา So two reasons there's a, a decline in religious practice and then there's a rise of irreligion so there's a need for Krishna to come And a staff change things. So we see in the upper picture Krishna coming in one of his incarnations as Lord Ramachandra. And he showed the 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 behavior of the ideal ruler as a king, the perfect king. And at the time, he also had spent years, some years in the forest in exile, and he killed many rakshasas. He killed many demons who were troubling the great devotees. And in the lower picture, you can see Lord Krishna uh, giving a death blow to the evil person Kamsa. And so Krishna comes to rid the world of these people to establish uh, good rulers. 
พระเจ้าคุณแม่แล้วทรงลงมานะคะเพื่อที่จะสังหารมาเหล่านี้ Then the next verse again another very well known verse which is often describes why what does Krishna do when he comes why is he coming He comes. He says to deliver the pious and to annihilate the miscreants, as well as to re-establish the principles of religion. I myself appear millennium after millennium. Slok ที่แปดนะคะก็เป็นสลกที่นิยมกันมากเหมือนกันนะคะก็คริสเตียนจะบอกว่าพระองค์เนี่ยทรงลงมาทำอะไรนะคะเพื่อจะส่งคนที่มีธรรมะและทำลายคนชั่วพร้อมกับสถาปนาหลักธรรมแห่งศาสนาขึ้นมาใหม่ตัวข้าจึงปรากฏกับแล้วกับเรา So you can you may you may recognize the personality in these two pictures This is Lord n a r s i n g a d e v the half lion half man incarnation จากในรูปนะคะเราเมื่อเราเห็นเราก็จะรู้จักกันดีนะคะก็คือรูปของตอนอวตารของพระองค์เจ้า n a r s i n g a d e v นั่นเองนะเป็นครึ่งคนครึ่งสิงโต So you can see in the two pictures the two reasons why the Lord comes, what He does when He comes. You see in the bottom picture He's fighting with the demon Haranyakashipu, and in the upper picture He's giving pleasure to the devotee Prahlad. Of course, the Lord, the Lord doesn't need to come to kill these demons. He, he, he can just simply give them a heart attack, and in this way, he can remove them from the world. And people may say, "Well, his devotees—they're always Krishna conscious. So why does the Lord need to come?" But we should understand that the, these devotees, just like in the upper picture, Lord n a r s i n g a d e v is embracing Prahlad. Prahlad, the boy devotee, that these devotees are always anxious to see the Lord. Devotees are always thinking. When will Krishna come? When will we see the Lord? So, we have to keep in mind that Krishna will come. When will we see him? When will we see him? When will we see him? And Krishna reciprocates with the desires of these pure devotees. And Krishna responds to the desires of the pure devotees. Okay, going ahead. The next verse. Okay, going ahead. The next verse. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. Who knows the Now, sometimes we may point out to you that this verse is one of the most important verses in the Bhagavad Gita. Because in this verse, Lord Krishna is telling the qualification: what you need to know, so that you don't have to take birth again in this world. Oh, เป็นสโลกที่คริสต์นาห์นะคะกำลังจะบอกว่า
อะไรคือสิ่งที่เราควรรู้และจะทําให้เราเนี่ยไม่ต้องกลับมาเกิดในโลกวัตถุนี้อีก You may say, "Well, if I'm not going to take birth in this world, where am I going to go?" So it's mentioned here: the devotees they go to the eternal abode. The the eternal abode means in the spiritual world, where they have a spiritual body which is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. <laughs> จะไม่กลับมาในในโลกวัตถุนี้อีกนะคะแล้วพวกเขาเนี่ยจะไปไหนพวกเขาก็จะบรรลุถึงอาณาจักรอมตะของของกิจจ์ So what is the qualification to go there? We simply have to understand the nature of Krishna's appearance and activities. แล้วคุณสมบัติที่เราจะต้องมีเพื่อให้บรรลุถึงโลกอันอมตะของพระองค์นั้นคืออะไรก็คือจะต้องรู้ถึงกิจกรรมคิดและก็คุณสมบัติของพระองค์ This is transcendental knowledge. If you can understand the transcendental nature of Krishna's birth and activities. ตรงนี้นะคะเรียกว่าความรู้ทิพย์เมื่อเราสามารถที่จะเข้าใจกิจกรรมและก็ลีลาของพระเจ้าเนี่ยว่ามันเป็นทิพย์เนี่ยตรงนี้ We take our birth under the control of the material nature, and we are put into a particular family, in a country, in a situation, which we didn't really choose, but it's put on us by according to our qualification. สำหรับเราแล้วนะคะเราเนี่ยถูกกำหนดโดยกรรมของเรานะคะโดยที่เราเนี่ยไม่สามารถเลือกได้ว่าเราจะเกิดในครอบครัวไหนประเทศไหนหรือว่าสถานการณ์ไหนซึ่งทุกอย่างนี้เนี่ยเราจะโดนบีบบังคับโดยกฎแห่งกรรม But Krishna he chooses where he is going to take his birth and he comes in the fam into the he takes his birth in the family of devotees แต่สำหรับกฤษณานะคะพระองค์เนี่ยทรงสามารถเลือกได้ว่าพระองค์เนี่ยจะเกิดที่ไหนจะเกิดในครอบครัวไหนจะเกิดมา We can see in the picture on the extreme right, Lord Krishna is appearing in his forearm form to Vasudev and Devaki. When Vasudev, Vasudev and Devaki are prisoners in the in the prison house of Kamsa. ในรูปนะคะเราสามารถเห็นได้ว่ากฤษณาเนี่ยทรงปรากฏต่อหน้าวาสุเดฟและก็เดวกี So Krishna appeared in the forearm form. But at their request, he transformed himself into the form of a, a little baby. Krishna, s o m r a k o t n a r u k o n p a v i s a n u s i k o n k o n n a a l a g a l a n j a k t i t a n a n s o n g n e k o r o n a t a n k o p r a n g r a n g a p e n Krishna t o n o n And then Vasudev was able to take Krishna over to the home of Nanda and Yashoda in Vrindavan, Gokula. และท่านวาสุเดฟนะคะก็พากริชนาตัวน้อยนะคะไปที่โกคุลนะที่นั่ที่บ้านของคุณแม่เยโชดา And you can นะ see the other two pictures how the lady that's mother Yashoda and she's chasing after a little child Krishna and she captures him and she ties him to the uh, wooden mortar แล้วก็อีกรูปภาพหนึ่งนะคะด้านบนเราก็สามารถเห็นได้ก็เป็นตอนที่คุณแม่เยโชดานะคะไล่ตีกฤษณาแล้วก็พอนางจับตัวกฤษณาได้เนี่ยก็จับกฤษณามัดกับโมกไม้ So this is Krishna's childhood lila, his childhood pastimes which he's performing, and one should understand the transcendental nature of these activities. อันนี้นะคะเรียกว่าเป็นเรื่องราวลีลาทิพย์ของกฤษณาตอนที่พระองค์ทรงซึ่งมันเป็นทิพย์โดยสมบูรณ์ The Lord Krishna is appearing as a child for the pleasure of his devotees. กฤษณาทรงมาปรากฏเป็นเด็กน้อยเด็กทารกน้อยเนี่ยเพื่อให้ความสุขแด่สาวกของพระองค์ And the pastimes which Krishna performed are all meant for the pleasure of his devotees, and the devotees sing about these pastimes and they remember them regularly. 
ทีกิชนาให้นะคะทีกิชนาส่งมาแสดงลีลานี้เนี่ยก็เพื่อให้ให้สาวกของพระองค์เนี่ยสามารถระลึกถึงและสามารถพูดถึงได้ Many wonderful pastimes were performed by Krishna as a young child in the home of Nanda and Yashoda. And one, and one who can understand the transcendental nature of these activities. Then they become qualified. They won't take birth again in the material world. They will go to the spiritual world for an eternal life in the association of Krishna. ใครก็แล้วแต่ที่เข้าใจถึงลีลาถึงเรื่องราวถึงลีลาของพระองค์ว่าเป็นลีลาทิพย์นะคะอันนี้เนี่ยถือว่าเป็นความรู้ทิพย์และสำหรับบุคคลนั้นเนี่ยเขาก็จะได้หลุดพ้นนะคะแล้วก็ได้จะได้ไปอย่างอามาตะอาณาจักรที่เป็นอามาตะของ Krishna. Now, of course, not everybody is able to accept the transcendental nature of Lord Krishna. A lot of people are in ignorance about these things, and they're not ready for that yet. And so, Lord Krishna explains other ways in which people can purify themselves. <laughs> And one of the ways in which they can purify themselves is by taking part in the different divisions of society which were arranged by Lord Krishna. So we see everywhere in the world there are different types of work, different types of engagement for people. Somebody may be the educated class, and they may be the teacher, and they study a lot. And they have a lot of, they have good knowledge, and they can give good help and guidance to people. So that's a Brahminical kind of position in society. Or we may say the intellectual class of people. And then you have the Kshatriya. The Kshatriya is more the administrator and the rulers and the managerial people. And then you have the Vaishya who is doing farming and agriculture, cow protection and banking and trading. And then you have the, the sutra, the worker, who works in the service of others. And so Krishna, Krishna is the creator of this system, but he doesn't put somebody into this position, you be the Brahman, you be the sutra. We ourselves, develop a particular nature and we put ourselves into these conditions. But everywhere in the world you'll see there are these four different divisions of society. 
ต่ว่าทุกที่นะคะในทุกสังคมเนี่ยเราก็จะสามารถเห็นเราก็จะสามารถแบ่งนะคะคนเนี่ยออกเป็น4ส่วนได้ The the an intellectual class are like the head in the social body. ก็จะแบ่งออกเป็นพวกประเภทที่มีปัญญาหรือประเภทที่ใช้สมองหรือว่าประเภทที่ใช้แรงงาน And the shatria are like the arms in the social body. They're used to protect the society, to protect people. เมื่อเราเปรียบเทียบกับร่างกายนะคะพวกพรามเนี่ยก็เปรียบเสมือนกับเป็นส่วนหัวของร่างกายนะคะพระเชตริยะเนี่ยก็เปรียบเสมือนกับเป็นส่วนแขนนะคะก็คือส่วนที่ป้องกันทำงานอะไร And then the Vaishya who are doing the the business and trading they're like the the belly in the social body The Vaishya นะคะก็เหมือนกับเป็นพ่อค้าวานิชก็เหมือนกับการทำธุรกิจการทำ And then you have the the laborer who are like the legs in the social body, the worker. So the purpose of this system is that they will all cooperate and help each other. Not that one person is better than another, but they all help each other. They work together. แต่ว่าอันนี้นะคะมันไม่ได้หมายความว่าทุกคนเนี่ยจะต้องมาคอยนั่งแข่งกันว่าฉันเก่งกว่าเธอหรือว่าเธอดีกว่าฉันแต่จุดประสงค์ที่ถูกสร้างมาแบบนี้ก็เพื่อที่จะให้ทุกคนทำงานร่วมกัน And Krishna created this so that the whole human society could work together in a cooperative manner, live together peacefully, helping each other. กริชนาก็ทรงสร้างสิ่งนี้มาเนี่ยเพื่อที่จะให้ทุกคนเนี่ยช่วยกันนะคะและปฏิบัติตามหน้าที่ของตนเพื่อให้สังคมเนี่ยสามารถดำเนินการไปได้โอ้โอ้ไม Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Archana, I can't unmute myself. You have to unmute me. Who is the host? Hare Krishna. Can you hear me now? I'm not hearing you. I can't hear you. Are you muted? I'm not hearing anything. No sound.
Can you hear me now? Yes, good day. Okay, I now, can hear. now I've got you, yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, so let me start again. Let me see, where are we? Can you see? Yes, good. Okay, where are we? Four thirty. Oh, wait. Okay. Yes. So we spoke about the four varnas. Krishna says that he created this system, yet he is a non-doer, being unchangeable. Krishna doesn't do it. He lets us put ourselves according to our own activities. We develop a particular nature. Somebody is an intellectual and somebody is a laborer. So it's not Krishna, we can't blame Krishna. Okay, we're going on next very important verse because Krishna then speaks about Yagya. Sacrifice, right? You heard about Yagya yesterday. Yagya means to do something for the pleasure of Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna. So, in this fourth chapter, Krishna describes to Arjuna different processes of performing yagya. And by doing yagya, then we will develop transcendental knowledge. So Krishna said, just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively, render service unto him. A self-realized soul can impart knowledge unto you because they have seen the truth. So this is a yagya, approaching a spiritual master. And the process of approaching the spiritual master is described that we have to be humble, we have to be submissive, right? Bow before him. And then we have to put questions to him. And we should offer service to him. Now, putting questions is a delicate thing. The questions should be of a proper nature. They shouldn't be challenging questions. So, 
Sometimes people ask very challenging questions which are really stupid questions. An example would be, can God make a stone so heavy that even he can't lift it? So this is a very stupid question to ask. But the devotees can also answer that question. And the devotee will say, yes, you are that stone, because you're so stupid, you ask such a dumb question. And some, sometimes they ask questions like, you can see in the picture here, on the upper picture, the person is sitting up on a seat and the person is kneeling before of him. So sometimes people say, why you have to sit on a big seat and we're all sitting on the floor? So, if, if they say like that, the teacher may say to them, are you envious? Mm. So, some of these kinds of questions are not very suitable. Sometimes people come, they want to know, can you tell me the lucky number so I can win a lot of money in the lottery? So people sometimes are not very intelligent about what kind of questions to put before the spiritual teacher. And you have to be able to recognize also who is the spiritual teacher. It's not that we can know the spiritual teacher simply by dress. He may have a big beard and he may have saffron cloth and he may have bright eyes, but it doesn't mean that he's a, a good teacher, that he's a bona fide teacher. But he has, to, he has to have understood the truth and he has to also be able to explain it to others. If the teacher says, well, I know the truth, but I can't explain it to you, I can't put it into words, then he's not going to be able to teach you. So both the, the, the student and the teacher have to be qualified. And when they're both qualified, then there will be a nice transmission of spiritual knowledge. And the next verse describes what that knowledge is. Having obtained real knowledge from a self-realized soul, you will never fall again into such illusion. 
For by this knowledge you will see that all living beings are but part of the Supreme, or in other words, that they are mine. So the result of this knowledge is you won't fall into illusion again. And we'll see the spiritual identity of all living entities. So here you can see that the sadhu with the big beard and the saffron dress, he's riding on the horse. So there's a story that uh, the, the sadhu had some disciples who were with him and he was riding the horse and this, the, the disciples were following behind. So it happened that some well, when they were riding on the horse, some of the things which he was carrying on the horse fell off and they didn't pick them up. So the, the, the sadhu was very angry and he said, why didn't you pick up the things when they fell off the horse? So they, they said, well, you never told us that we had, to, you told us that if you just follow you, you never told us to pick up anything. So he said, yeah, anything that falls off the horse, you should pick it up. So they were going along and what happened was the horse started to pass stool. And so the disciples were so silly, they picked up the stool and they were carrying the stool. แล้วสะเนปลูกศิษย์ก็ตอบว่าอ้าวในพระอาจารย์เราเธอนี่ไม่ฉลาดเสียจริงๆต้องเก็บด้วยสิเวลาของลุงลุงแบบนี้เธอ
ในบทนี้นะคะก็เป็นบทสุดท้ายซึ่งในบทนี้ได้บรรยายว่าพระองค์เจ้าเจตนญานะก็ทรงบอกว่าการสวดภาวนาฮาริคุชนะเนี่ยเป็นคนทางเดียวในกาลยุคนี้ You don't need to read a lot of books. If you just read the Bhagavad Gita and chant Hare Krishna mantra, you can get all perfection. Right. So, all right. So, are there any questions? มีคำถามอะไรไหมคะ First question g u r u m a r a j from s a r a p u n i m a m a n Yes Hare Krishna ท่านบัตรนาม ไม่ใช่นะครับอืมถามว่าตอนนี้ตอนนี้นะเพื่อนๆของเพื่อนๆของเรามีเพื่อนๆหลายคนนะที่เป็นลูกศิษย์ของเจ้าตระกูลมา
and who has done so much wonderful service for the Krishna Consciousness Movement. And you can, can take instruction from any of the other teachers in ISKCON. You're connected to them also. Initiation, you're not just initiated into Jai Pataka Swami, but you're initiated into ISKCON. Maharaj gives initiation. When we give, when a spiritual master in ISKCON gives initiation, you're initiated as a member of ISKCON. And so you have a right, you, you have a facility to go and meet other gurus and to hear from them and question from them and get advice from them. But Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj has many people who speak Hindi and they can translate whatever you say, whatever you like to write to him. You write to him, he will certainly reply. Okay. Any other question? Yes, good. I've got a few more. Okay. Shaya Mataji. Yes, Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna Dhanavarpana. Please accept my humble obeisances. Ajana Prahena Naha. My chapter C, Salo, C to Saka, C to Siaha. T. Kawa, Mina Su Bang Lem, I have been come at the Bible for Savo, Bang Lem, been come at the Bible for man, and he puts on Sana. The poor and Kawa. สรุปในสี่จุดสี่ว่าประมาณว่าเหมือนกับว่ามาชอบศึกษาคริสต์น่าจะคงมองของตัวเองอันนี้พี่สรุปคร่าวๆว่าเอ่อหมายความที่จะ
kill him or how, how will he no, because, because in the Kali Yuga, everybody is a devotee and a demon in the same body. So, we don't, Lord Chaitanya comes, he doesn't kill anybody, he, but he, he makes the demons into devotees. Yeah, when, when Lord Rama came, he killed the demons, and Krishna killed the demons. But Lord Chaitanya, he made the demons into devotees. Mm. So in the count, he is the most merciful of all of Krishna's incarnations. So you also have to make the demons into devotees, Jaya. Because every, in Kali Yuga we're all demons, we're all little demons, but we can become devotees. We just have to preach, we have to give them Krishna consciousness. We have to get them to chant Hare Krishna and give them prasadam, then they'll become devotees. Some of our devotees during the lockdown, they're going out and giving prasadam to people, giving away hundreds of boxes. In Patiya, they do it quite a lot. They give like 500 boxes of prasadam at a time. Many people would become devotee just by eating prasadam. Before they were demons, but when they start eating prasadam, they become devotees. Mm -hmm. Understand Jaya? Kojai? Is she there? Yes, Goma, but I think she is mute. Oh. So we can't hear her. Oh. Um, okay. okay. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I'm trying to do everything um, to keep King Prasadam and distribute to my friends, my family, and um, engage um, many devotees with Prasadam also. Then I was cooking. And so, um, but, but about um, some people uh, I know in um, social media about Facebook or something. Um, and many people are avidya and believe in demon to fake about, um, I mean, fake content about Krishna or something is um, wrong uh, knowledge or something. Then I'm trying to write the content and to, to um, spread it in Facebook and trying to do everything. Maharaj. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Oh, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, we got two more questions.
question. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, Yuna Mataji. Yuna, yes. Hare Krishna, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, Yuna. Oh. Uh, Yuna Mataji? Oh, yes. She's here. Oh, Hare Krishna. Yes, Mataji, go ahead. Um, yeah, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, O oh, Guru Sri Srila Prabhupada. Uh, I have a question about the uh, second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, why Krishna reminds Arjuna of the Kshatriya's Dharma if he tells him yoga? If Krishna is given a transcendental uh, teaching, why is he given material arguments uh, to Arjuna? Uh, thank you. Uh, well, remember, Arjuna had reasons why he didn't want to fight. So Krishna was giving arguments why he should fight. And he was giving material arguments. If Arjuna couldn't accept the transcendent, you know, of course Arjuna could accept, but there's many people also who, are, have, to, who have to hear Krishna's teaching. And so some people, they need to hear the material arguments. They need to hear about karmakanda. They need to hear the material benefits of fighting. And so Krishna gave it. But then he went on to higher things. So you have to understand Krishna is not just speaking to only Arjuna, but he's speaking to the world. And some people, they need to hear these material arguments. Yeah, that's that's how we explain it. Krishna's Krishna's it's not that Krishna's believing or promoting karma kanda material reasons, but some people they need to hear this. Not everybody can understand the, to, to can take up buddhi yoga. Not everyone has that kind of intelligence, that control over the mind to take up buddhi yoga. So Krishna has to explain all different angles of arguments to satisfy everyone. Okay, another question? Yes. There is a question from Sumadhuri Mataji, the chat room. So, um, Krishna has created four varnas to create a peaceful society. So, at the same time, we can see how these divisions actually, you know, have also created a lot of quarrels and fights and abuses in the society. So, how can we understand this knowledge? เอ่อศาลสี่วันวานาอาชรัมขึ้นมาใช่มั้ยคะแต่ว่าในเอ่อบางครั้งเนี่ยมันปรากฏว่าการแบ่งแยกชนชั้นออกเป็นแบบเน
according, according to guna, quality, in karma means activity, not by birth. Your father may be a, a doctor. It doesn't mean you're also qualified to be the doctor. You have to go and study. You have to graduate. Then you become the doctor. Your father may be judge. It doesn't mean the son is also judge. He has to study, he has to get the qualification, and then he can become the judge. So someone may be born in the Brahmana family, but if he doesn't have the Brahminical qualities, and he doesn't have the behavior of the Brahman, then he's not a Brahman. So one who is a Brahmana is expected to work like a Brahmana. You cannot just simply think, I'm a Brahmana and be a businessman. So this was the failure of the, this is why this system of Varnashram failed, because people applied it only by birth instead of by guna and karma. And therefore, and we see also before the time of Lord Buddha how the Brahminical culture had become so degraded that in the name of the Vedas, the Brahmanas were doing a lot of animal sacrifice. So Lord Buddha came and he led the people away from the Vedas. And he said, we don't need this division of society. This, he taught everybody's the same, we're all equal. Well, on the spiritual platform we're all equal, but materially we see we're not equal. Somebody is physically strong and somebody is physically weak. Somebody is very good in the brain and good thinking, good memory, and some people is very poor. And some people are very good at making money, and others are hopeless at making money. So, of course, that's not the business of the Brahmana, to just make money, do business. Brahmanas are meant to do six things. They're meant to study the scriptures and teach the scriptures. And they're meant to worship the deities 
and teach people to worship the deity. And they're meant, they're allowed to accept charity and they can also give charity. But the problem is that in the Kali Yuga, the Brahmanas become expert only in one thing, and that is they want to accept charity. So we're, we're trying to change that, we're trying to teach people what is the proper standard. It does not matter what varna we're in. It does not matter if we're Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra. It's important everyone is devotee. Then we're all equal. Krishna is in everyone's heart. Okay, any other question? Yes, good. I've got one more oh. from Sachi Sutta. From who? From who? From Nimai Sachi Sutta. Nimai Sachi Sutta. Hare Krishna Prabhu. I actually had a question about the chapter 2, which I did not ask. Is it okay if I ask? Yeah, please ask. Uh, yeah, I think in 2.14, Krishna mentions that the soul is immovable. Uh, I could not understand the meaning of how that relates to the soul. Uh, it's inconceivable, it's eternal, ever existing, but I could not understand well, immovable, Archana? Yes. Kamtham from Broji, na ha, ko ma ta bhut thi song na ha, thi Broji yak ta tham. Ko ko tham wa, ton di Krishna thi ba kyo ko lang du mun yai na Krishna ko bo wa, pen tham khen thi la ko mai khen thi Broji na mai ko chai na ton thi ban yai wa pen thi mai khen thi na ha nan ma ko mai yang ba. The indication is that means the soul is in the heart. It's there in the heart for the living entity. It's not going to move. It's not going to just get up and move. It's in the heart. The book was at the end of the life, then at that time then the soul will move, take another body. But so long as the life is there within the body, the soul is going to stay within the heart. <laughs> อ่าสถิตย์อย่างเช่นเวลาดวงเนี่ยเข้ามาในร่างนี้แล้วเนี่ยเขาก็จะอยู่ในร่างนี้ไปจนถึงเอ่อจนถึงร่างนี้หมด
Yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, this, that point, immovable, comes up. Uh, other people have asked this before, and we always just answer it like that. We just say, well, it's always in the heart. It's going to stay in the heart. It's not going to move independently until the, the life is over. The end of life, then the soul leaves. Okay, so we will stop here today. Okay, okay. so tomorrow we'll go on to chapter 5. Everyone, you can look over and if you have any other questions then you can ask them. We will try okay. to continue. Okay, thank okay, you very ma much. Thank you very much. Okay, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Go back to Vrinda ki. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Archana ki jai. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Sorry, this time again. Finished? No, just finished.